Hello everybody, welcome back to the new Iron Man account guide for i3. This is part 2 of the guide, so if you have not seen part 1, I will link it in the description below. Please watch it first. In the first part of our guide, we went through the Berthop, Taverley, Falador, Edgeville, Barbarian Village, Varrock and ended up in Lumbridge, where we did some quests and started training our magic to level 30 through Jacqueline the Lumbridge Slayer Master. Once you have reached level 30 magic, we'll be able to use the battle staff we brought in Varrock. This will be our main method of combat going forward. Now that you have level 30 magic, head to the Lumbridge docks by the river behind the Lumbridge church. On the dock, there is a wizard. Ask him to teleport you and you'll appear on the back of Tuska. From where you were teleported, speak to Tunks who should be right next to you to start Call of the Ancestor quest. Head south from Tonks and go through the portal to reach Mass Cap. Head north, then east to reach a village called Kanata. In the village, speak to Aka Kanata to continue the call of the ancestor quest. He will ask you to do some activities around the village. Follow his instructions to help around the village, and eventually he will ask you to head towards Nami Forest. Head out of the village and keep going west until you reach an area of forest. Before we enter the forest and proceed with the quest, we are going to check the Nemi Forest subreddit to see if there is an active world hosting Nemi Forest. For the subreddit, I will leave it down in the description below. This is completely separate from the quest. Within the Nemi Forest, there is a daily DND where you can go through the forest and perform actions on different nodes to gain XP. The forest itself is procedurally generated, so not every forest will have all the nodes. So it's important to check the Nemi Forest subreddit to see if somebody is hosting a world where there are forests with all 9 nodes. If there is an open world, you should go to that world and do all the nodes to gain some prayer, mining and dungeoneering experience. While you're going through the early game of your Iron Man account, it is worth coming back here daily to do the nodes for XP. This is very good experience for Iron Man, especially as Dungeoneering and Prayer XP are very hard to get early on. Check out my 5 dailies for low mid level Iron Man for details. This detour aside, enter the forest and select the option to continue the quest. The rest of the quest is a lot of different puzzles, and we won't really be doing anything else in this area apart from the quest. So, I won't be detailing the rest of the quest step by step. You can check the IS Wiki quest guide if you need help completing this quest. Once you have completed the quest, home Telly back to Lumbridge and head west towards Draenor Village. Once you are at Draenor Village, the first thing you will want to do, as always, is to activate the Lowstone. Once you have activated the lowstone, head slightly west and there should be a bunch of purple carriages. Here, speak to Maggie to start the quest swept away. We will then head to the bank to withdraw the two red berries, two wood leaves and two onions that we got in the last video. Head to the house with the cauldron to ask Aggie to produce blue, yellow and red dye. While you are here, you can also do one of these steps for swept away by selecting option 2. She will teleport you and ask you to complete a puzzle. Solve this puzzle by sweeping away some of the lines to complete this step. Once done, go to the house northeast of her and speak to Morgan to start Vampire Slayer. You can go upstairs to get a bubble garlic to make this quest easier, but we won't be needing it. Now from here, we will be completing three quests back to back. The three quests are Stolen Heart, Diamond in the Rough, and Jack of Spades, all taking part in the desert area. Go and speak to Ozan, who is standing just north of where Morgan's house was to start Stolen Heart. Use option 3 to go down the trap door in the house right next to Ozan. Go through the dialogue, then speak to Kanom in a building where you will get a cutscene. 
You will then need to go south after the casting to the river, where you will kill some Skull's mercenary. Leela will give you a passphrase after you have killed the mercenary. Write this passphrase down as you will need it later. Agree to travel with Ozan to Alcarid and Ozan will start following you. To get to Alcarid, we're going to home Telly back to Lumbridge and then run east. Once you are in Alcarid, activate the Lowstone, then head into the Alcarid Palace to continue the quest. You will then to do a bunch of parkour steps across the city until you end up in the palace where you will need to solve a puzzle, then give the passphrase Leela gave you to finish the quest. Again, look at the IS Wiki quest guide if you get stuck. Once you have completed the quest, Head outside the palace and speak to Ozan who will start the next quest which is Diamond in the Rough. Go through all the steps to complete Diamond in the Rough, you will end up back in Alcarid's palace where you can immediately start Jack of Spades. Starting Jack of Spades will bring you to Manifoss. When you are in Manifoss, complete the rest of the quest. During the quest, you will end up in the Imperial area in order to speak to Akomet. While you are in the area, remember to activate the mana fossil lodestone that are down the stairs just east of the imperial area. Eventually, you will end up back in the merchant area of mana fossil where you will complete the quest. From where you finish the quest, head east to the bank where you will bank everything on you and take out some food. In mana fossil, there are two activities we will be looking to do. One is thieving gullible tourist. The other is squishing corrupted scarabs. Unfortunately, both activities are random events, so neither may be active on your world. The first thing we're going to do is join a Manifoss friend chat. The one I use in this video is so obby. Within these FC, they will generally call the random events occurring around Manifoss as they happen in different worlds. It is much more common for scarabs to be called than tourists. Once you have joined the friend chat, check to see if anybody is calling scarabs or tourists. What event is active will determine what you will do next. If nothing is being called at the moment, we will go hunt for our own gullible tourist. Due to the length of gullible tourist spawns, it is generally quite easy to find one. From the bank, use the shifting tomb to head to the port area. From here, head south to the docks. If you're lucky, there will be a gullible tourist next to Sensei Hakase, who is the Blue Siren. If there is not, we will just hop walls until we find one. Again, the gullible tourist event do last a few hours, so it should only take a few world hops until you find one. Now, before we start thieving, we are actually going to set our Mana Force faction. Click on the Mana Force interface and click the star next to the port region to align yourself to the port faction. We have no need for faction reputation at this point, but we have chosen the port faction as it will unlock a bank next to the desert fishing spot. While outside the scope of this guide, this bank will be useful for when you level up fishing. Manos Force Fishing is one of the best ways to level up fishing from level 52 to 80. Back to the task at hand, thieving gullible tourists is very good cash for a starting account. You will occasionally receive small magnified gift offerings. When you open up these gift offerings, you can receive between 24 to 75k. Now, for the rest of this guide, there will be no thieving level requirements, so you can stay here for as long or as short as you like. You can always come back here for some more cash if you find yourself running low. My personal recommendation is to stay here until level 30 thieving. Aside from money reasons, at level 30 thieving, you can complete the feud. With the completion of the feud and unlocking thieving guild through the quest buyers and sellers, you'll be able to start coaching volunteers. Coaching volunteers for most people will be the thieving training method of choice until you have reached safe cracking. By staying at Gullible Taurus until level 30, it will save you from having to come back here in the future and spending time world hopping to find a gullible tourist again. While you're getting your thieving level up, 
do keep an eye out in the friend chat for somebody calling out scarabs. Once they do, hop to the cold world and head to the shifting tomb entrance. If you are mid thieving, don't forget to note which world the gullible Taurus was on so you don't have to do world hopping searching again once scarabs end. Once you have reached the shifting tomb entrance, you should see these greenish scarabs crawling around. Click on them to squish them. You will gain slayer experience for doing so. You can spam click on a single scarab as you go through the squishy animation to get more reward per scarab. Once all the scarab in the area has been squished, you can enter and exit the shifting tomb and they will reappear. These do do a lot of damage, so take care, especially if you are a hardcore IMM. The amount of experience you get from scarabs will scale down the more you squish per day. You get 100% experience up to 23 scarabs, then 50% for the next 11, 33% for the 11 after, until 20% experience at 60 plus scarabs. How much you squish is really up to you, but I do suggest you do at least one round of scarabs per day as it is a very good Slayer experience. Similar to the Nemi Forest, you can come back here daily to get more experience. Check out my low level Iron Man daily video for more details. Once you are done with your thieving and scarab squishing, we will be ready to move on. From the bank, take out the red berry pie we made in the last video, battle staff, broomstick that Maya gave you for swept away, mine inside map and all back that Dora gave you for what's mine is yours from part 1 of the video, as well as some air runes. With deep items, home teleport to the Draenor Lowstone, then head west into Port Serum. Our first stop in Port Serum will be Betty's Magic Shop in the northwest corner of Port Serum. Select option 1 to start her step of the swept away quest, then head into the basement. Speak to Lolly, then complete the puzzle by 1. Putting the blackbird in the holding pen, 2. Rat in the blackbird pen, 3. Spider in the spider pen, 4. Lizard in the reptile pen, 5. Rat in the rat pen, and finally 6. Blackbird in the blackbird pen. Open the chest, then speak to Betty who will enchant your broomstick. Before we move on from her, open up her shop and buy all the air runes in stock. Head south from her and you will find a dwarf named Godric by the ship just east of Garen's fishing shop. Speak to him and select option 3, do you have anything for me, and he will give you a set of Pathfinder armor. This will be your armor for the beginning part of the game. It is hybrid, so you will be able to use it for any combat style. West of Godric is the Port Serum Lowstone. Activate that. Continue heading south onto the docks until you reach the southmost ship where you will find Trader Stan. Speak to him to start impressing the local questline. Go west from him into the jail to speak to Guard Captain Rockwind. Head north and go into the player-owned port portal in Port Serum. Once inside your player-owned port, before we continue with the quest, we are going to speak with Meg who is just west of the portal. Help her with her questions and she will return on weekly reset every Wednesday to give you an XP lamp. The optimal answer, as, as many things are, are on IS Wiki. Once you have done helping Meg, Go east from her to speak to the sea singer Yumi. Then go north and speak to Sela, the barmaid in the bar. Pick option 1 and after the dialogue go upstairs and speak to Mr. Gully. Once done speaking with Mr. Gully, we are going to head out of the player owned ports and head south. We will be heading all the way down south past the jails and out of port serum onto the hut with an anvil icon. Here you will find Thurgo. Give him a red berry pie and talk to him about Knight's sword until he says he is willing to make a new sword but needs a picture. Now head northwest to Remington. At Remington, the first thing we're going to do is speak to CC and Gemini, standing next to Remington Well for the Impress the Local quest. Head east from Gemini and enter the house from with the cauldron to speak to Hedy about Swept Away. Option 2. You will then need to enter the trap door just south of her house to complete a puzzle. The solution to this puzzle is slightly different for each player, so I won't be explaining how to do this puzzle. 
If you get stuck on this puzzle, consult the IELTS Wiki Quest Guide as needed. Speak to Hedy once you have completed the puzzle and she will give you your big broom and enchanting. Before we move on, you can actually speak to Hedy again to start Witch's Potion. We are not going to do Witch's Potion in this guide, but you can start the quest now to complete later. Once you have the broom enchanted, we'll be heading north out of Remington and slightly east until you reach the Remington Mine. You will get a cutscene for what mine is yours quest, once the casting ends, mine a copper or tin ore to spawn a rock brawler. Kill the brawler and pick up the ore. From the mine, head northwest until you reach Hobgoblin Peninsula. Here, you want to pick up a snake grass from the ground. Home teleport to Draenor Village and head west to speak to Maggie. Finish the swept away quest by stirring her cauldron until she is satisfied. As a reward for the quest, you can drink from her cauldron a total of 10 times for experience. Put all the experience into her blow. As a side note, whenever you get free experience, you should always try to put it into her blow. From Maggie, head to the first house south of her. There should be a potter and a pottery oven in this house. Head upstairs and speak to Black Knight Sergeant who will agree to join your crew for impressing the local quest. Home teleport to Port Serum and speak to Trader Stan again to finish the impressing the local quest. Immediately talk to the charter officers right next to Stan and charter yourself to Catherby. Once you have arrived in Catherby, activate the lodestone. That is where we will end this part of the guide. In the next part, we will be exploring the Kendering areas. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below. Please subscribe to stay tuned for the next video and I'll see you in the next part of this guide.